Hey everybody, our Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Uh, it's Independence Day weekend and of the three days, probably today is going to have the highest chance of seeing scattered storms. But I'll be honest with you, even today and tomorrow, these isolated the scattered storms are occurring in a very small window. So most of the day is going to be fine. But this evening, about that four, five, six, seven o'clock time frame, we're going to have to be aware for some pop-up storms. So here's what's going on. Let me give you the wide view here first. We'll kind of show you on the coast what's going on. There's the remnants of Colin. It is no longer a tropical system. It is moving offshore. Well, um, just FYI, if you're on the coast, there is still some pretty strong onshore flow in spots. So the surf is still pretty rough, but most of the rain has moved on. So again, you know, people are like, oh, there's a washout the weekend. No, that was a quick moving little system. Didn't cause a whole lot. But our big player for the weekend is right here. It's actually this cold front you can see coming in from the north. This cold front is the front that's going to come down here later today, move down here and tap into some really hot and humid air that is surging into the Carolinas. In fact, if we look at the surface observations, I'll pop them up real quickly here and kind of show you um, the surface observations. We'll put the dew points on first because I think the dew points will tell you a lot what's going on. Dew points are in the 70s. So it's really sticky out there. Air temperature is already close to 80 degrees. So there's a lot of fuel for these storms to feed off this off of this afternoon. So let's look at the severe weather outlook. It's not a huge risk. This is a low end risk, the lowest of our four levels, low, medium, high, and extreme. Um, just means unlike yesterday in the last couple of days, the storms that can get going today are going to have a little more energy to produce some damaging straight line winds. Now, what's interesting about this front, once it gets down here, how far south does it get? And that's a big player for what's coming up on Monday. So let's look ahead to our future cast. First things first, we'll look at the very short range rapid refresh model. This is the one of the models we look at quite a bit for rapid refresh every hour. So we'll go through time here. I'm going to go into the afternoon. I'm going to stop this around three o'clock. So between now and three, there's really not much going on. But by, right around three o'clock, the typical summer pattern, we're going to see these pop up storms develop on the uh, ridge tops and east of the mountains. But there's also the cold front here, which is basically going to be extending from Virginia back into Tennessee. That'll be sliding south. So as we go into the evening hours, five o'clock, hey, the storms are popping up, but a lot of areas are still dry. This is what I mean. There's never a washout in these setups. It's just the timing that can be problematic. So we get towards six, seven o'clock. OK, now we've got some pretty good storms around. Now, again, this is just one model. This is showing you the probability of storms. Don't look at the specific area because the storm's not going to pop up right there. It's going to be somewhere in this area. This will give you a general idea of how many storms we expect to see. You got to think about thunderstorms as bubbles that bubble up when you boil water on the stove. You know they're going to pop up. You just don't know the specific spot in the pot that they're going to happen. In a case like today, we've got a pretty good chance, 50, 60 percent, you're going to see some of these storms bubble up and move through. And notice the time frame. It's probably more in the mid to late evening. So dinner time and after six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 o'clock, you can see it moving through. I'll stop this at midnight. Now, our, our guidance stops here. Now, what's important is there's going to be this front in here somewhere. Is it here? Does it slide to the south? Does it get hung up? Because that'll be important to what happens on Monday. So let's look ahead to the Monday time frame. So at midnight, we've got some kind of stalled front in this area. We'll go into early on the 4th of July morning. I'll stop it early in the morning, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, depending on how early you're up, 9 a.m. I know we have a little parade in the neighborhood at 9. Fine in the morning, maybe a few storms in eastern North Carolina. But let's go through time. We'll go into the afternoon hours. Uh, this is noon on the 4th. Not a lot going on. We'll go into the late afternoons, 2 o'clock. Yeah, we've got some pop-up storms like we're seeing the last couple days by 3, 4 o'clock. They're really isolated. Notice how they're so small and spread out. Unlike what happens today, more of a couple lines that might develop. This is what we expect for the 4th of July, a pop-up storm, isolated in nature, five, six, seven o'clock. So evening cookouts, um, you're gonna have some, some pop-up storms to deal with, but let's get close to fireworks time. Closer to eight, nine o'clock, ooh, could we see a few storms bubble up? Possibly, I, don't, I think this is a little overdone and I'm gonna show you why here in a minute. But I do think there will be some storms at least threatening the area that we're going to have to keep a close eye on. I don't think the coverage will be quite as pessimistic as what we're seeing here, but there is the chance. So you got to have a backup plan just in case. So let's look at one other piece of guidance here. All right, so let's look at a different model just to get a different perspective on the probability. So you can see as we go through the 4th of July, uh, the front on this model, which is the NAM 3, is a little more hung up in the area. So maybe some clouds and showers in the morning. But as we get into the afternoon, things actually improve until about eight o'clock and we see some pop up storms. So, again, both pieces of guidance showing some storms around fireworks time. Remember, sunsets around 848. So 930 ish to 10 has been kind of the time frame for most of the fireworks displays. 
So you get the idea. Pop-up storms right around that time frame, and they could last into Tuesday. So we'll keep an eye on the risk for these pop-up storms. There's certainly going to be some around today and tomorrow. Just got to have a backup plan and be ready to go. They should be scattered enough. Not everybody's going to see them. But lightning is our biggest concern for any of those outdoor activities. So make sure you seek shelter. Hopefully, in most cases, these showers and storms are going to last maybe 40 minutes to an hour and then be gone. So if you can time these out and just take a break, head indoors, head back out, a lot of things can still go on. Of course, I'll monitor this throughout the day. Make sure you grab the WCNC app to stay up to date on, on the weather and keep an eye on that radar. Lightning is our concern for these outdoor activities. I will post an update probably tonight or first thing tomorrow, but please be safe on this 4th of July holiday weekend. Have a great weekend and enjoy your friends and family and the 4th of July.